Gravitational time dilation, our mother tongue, and the likelihood of saving for retirement have more in common than we might realize. Interstellar is one of my favorite movies, partly due to the really cool way that they use time as a central plot device, with a Nobel Prize winning theoretical physicist named Kip Thorne as one of the executive producers, the film teaches us, amongst other things, that time is experienced differently depending on our distance from a gravitational mass. I know what you're thinking. What does this have to do with saving money? I'm getting to it. In the movie, one hour spent on the surface of a planet parked by the side of a black hole translated into seven years passing on Earth. Now, a similarly mind-bending phenomenon occurs when it comes to thinking about consuming cinnamon rolls. Again, I'm getting to the money part, just bear with me. If you are offered the choice between receiving one free, warm, freshly baked cinnamon roll right now, or receiving two of those cinnamon rolls hot out of the oven in one week from now, most people would opt to receive one now, right? It'd be very tempting. But if the question was changed to offering a choice between one cinnamon roll in one year or two cinnamon rolls in one year plus one week, most of us now would make the more rational choice to take twice as many cinnamon rolls in exchange for waiting one week. When we break it down, the question in either of those choice alternatives was essentially, would you like one cinnamon roll at time X or two cinnamon rolls at time X plus one week? but it turns out that time X is rather important. The further away a reward is from the present, the lower we value it. And this relationship is not linear. The rate at which the perceived value decreases initially starts out very rapidly and then slows down over time. Known as hyperbolic discounting, we have a tendency to prefer faster, smaller rewards over larger, later rewards. This is analogous to the effects of a black hole on time, sort of. I'm making, I'm making a bit of a stretch. The closer a choice we make is to the present, the more irrational we might be. This partly explains why saving for retirement is not easy for most of us. If we had $100 today that we could spend or save for retirement, the pleasure of spending that right now seems amplified in our minds. The benefit of having more money to spend in retirement is so far away that the perceived value right now is very low. With a higher perceived value for the smaller immediate reward, saving for the future often takes a back seat. One way to increase people's savings is to show them renderings of what they might look like at retirement age. This has the effect of decreasing the psychological distance between the present self and the future self by making the future feel more concrete and less abstract. Keith Chen, who is a behavioral economist at UCLA's Anderson School of Management, offers some research that further backs up this hypothesis. He found that people who spoke languages that don't grammatically separate present and future tenses distinctly tend to save more money. Now, luckily, he's got a TED-Ed talk that you can watch, which describes the research in more detail. But from his research paper, he provides some uh, specific examples of what these grammatical differences might be. So, for example, in English, we might say, it is going to rain tomorrow, or tomorrow it will rain. But you could convey this prediction about weather in German by saying Morgen regnet S. And I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that properly. I apologize if I'm not. But that translates basically to it rains tomorrow. So different languages grammatically separate the present from the future to different degrees. And speakers of languages with the least grammatical separation of time have a higher likelihood of saving money. Now, particularly interesting is how Dr. Chen describes smoking as like negative savings. Saving for retirement requires some pain to save in exchange for the future pleasure of consumption. Smoking is the opposite. Smoking would be pleasant in the present for people who enjoy smoking in exchange for future pain. For example, getting cancer, coughing up blood, and all the other nasty things associated with smoking. As would be expected from his hypothesis, speakers of languages with less grammatical distance between the present and future 
not only save more, they smoke less. They see a more direct connection between present behaviors and future outcomes in general. And if you're wondering about correlation versus causation, you can take a look at his research paper to see the very cool methodology used to tease those apart. And I'll put a link to that paper in the description down below. So does all this mean that you should start learning German in order to save more money and to be healthier? Nine. That means no. Um, <laughs> that would be pretty impractical realistically speaking. But in terms of making better choices, if we can pre-commit to making choices that happen in the future, we might escape the gravity of immediate gratification. And that's been tested by Nobel laureate Richard Thaler and Shlomo Bernardzi, who essentially asked people if they would like to save more for tomorrow, tomorrow. Instead of asking people if they want to start saving more for retirement right now, which it entails spending less today, they asked them if they wanted to save more for retirement starting in the future by pre-committing a portion of any future income increases to savings. So not only do they escape the gravity of the present, they also don't experience a loss in cash flow. It's kind of like a double bonus. Even though they agree to save more in the future, those new savings come as a percentage of new income, which still leaves them with more take-home money to spend. So if you aren't saving as much as you would like, and I'm pretty sure that's the majority of us, you can pre-commit a percentage of any future raises into your long-term savings and investments right now. So for example, if you know you're getting a raise, which will see your paycheck increase by $100 a few months from now, you could pre-commit 50% of that raise, or in this case, $50, to go towards new savings when that raise comes into effect it might be easier to follow through because you're still getting an increase in cash flow of $50 per pay period. Compare that to a decrease in cash flow of $50 per paycheck if you were to just start that right now before you got the raise, and you can see how that's much more palatable. So maybe you can write down on a piece of paper and stick it to your fridge, you know, how much you're willing to pre-commit of any future income increases that will go towards saving for the long term. Or if you work with a financial advisor, you can send them an email right now with your intention. It could be as simple as writing out, I am getting a raise on June 1st and I want to put 50% of that increase towards my long term savings at that time. I encourage you to think about that right now and write it down. What percentage of any future income increases do you want to put away for the future? Let us know what percentage you came up with in the comment section down below. And I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button if you made it this far in the video. And of course, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell to get notified when new videos are published. Thanks so much for watching.